Hi, everyone. Welcome. We're seeing that you're all entering into the, the meeting space. So welcome, everyone, to our seventh AMSA lecture, Telling a Story Through Data Visualization. My name is Sabrina Dimitra, and I will be facilitating today's um, lecture. And so I'd like to just, before we get situated and, and get started with our lecture, I just want to acknowledge and situate the territory upon which we're located. And so as a provincial umbrella association, AMSA would like to acknowledge that BC is home to 198 First Nations. We would also like to express and recognize the privilege that we have as settlers on this land. We wish to acknowledge that AMSA's operation is located on the unceded traditional territories of the Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh First Nations. I would also like to acknowledge that I'm joining you today from the unceded territories of the Stolo, Kwantlen, and Katsi First Nations. And on the next slide, I would like to thank um, the, our funder of today's event, Immigration, Refugees, and Citizenship Canada for funding this event. And so I'd like to now take the time to introduce our speaker for today's lecture. I'd like to introduce Sandra Chenal. Um, Sandra is a doctoral candidate uh, and the University of British Columbia, and her research looks at the intersections between immigration and education policy. And Sandra's going to be introducing herself a little bit more and, and contextualizing um, this lecture for us today. So I'd like to hand it over to, to Sandra. We're going to be talking about data visualization this afternoon, and I'm I was saying to Sabrina, I, I was delighted that so many people signed up for the lecture um, because I take it as a really great fact that the word data doesn't scare you. Um, there is uh, so much happening in this field, and uh, I have to tell you right off the bat that I am not a developer. I am not a computer scientist. Uh, I have been a professional career international educator, uh, working in administration, uh, interested in the success and, and uh, transition of international students, which is what led me to my graduate work, uh, looking at more of the policy side and the inter intersections between immigration and education. But uh, I fell into data visualization because I wanted to tell a story. And that was the story of my research, but also of migration in general. And so this is not going to be about learning how to specifically, this is not a tutorial on a certain kind of software. This is thinking about and uh, learning about what has been happening in the field of data visualization and how specifically in the field of migration, settlement, uh, support of newcomers, uh, we can harness the data that exists and uh, also make use of the data that we have. Uh, so hopefully that is why you're here. Um, uh, the objectives that I have are to really talk about what data visualization actually is and to interact with it a little bit, reflect on our data, and then I want to show you what's possible. Uh, but uh, it would be really helpful for me to understand where people are at. I want to uh, frame this in a way that is helpful and that gives you some really uh, critical takeaways that you can go back and either make use of uh, new data resources or think about how to harness your data in a different way. So we have a couple of poll questions. And so I'm going to stop sharing and hand it over to Nagin, who is going to use this wonderful technology to ask you a few poll questions. And I think you can see them there. Please go ahead and vote, and then we can all look and see where we might be at, and that might help me make sure I don't go too fast or too slow on any of the visualizations I'm gonna show you. Oh, so these are interesting for me. Thank you very much. Uh, does your organization currently have or use data visualization? 
a lot of you don't know, which might have to do with understanding what data visualization is because 46% uh, of you said, not sure. So that's great. I can totally help with that. And uh, some of you do. And uh, it's mixed in terms of how much you're using it. So that's great. What we can do is share with one another, those of you that um, have a little bit more experience. I think that will be very helpful to some people who are new to the idea. And hopefully I'll be able to share things that you don't know uh, as well as reinforce some of the things that you do. So thank you very much. I'm gonna, can I close this? All right. I'm going to warn you a little bit that um, I am going to be going back and forth with my share screen quite a bit, but we'll get started. So visualization is not new, obviously. And when I'm talking about visualization, I'm, I'm talking about images that people see. Um, but what that kind of visualization always depends on is what you're trying to say or the story that you're telling. Obviously your audience, um, who's receiving that information and how, like whether you're in a face-to-face -face situation or in an online situation or the kinds of technology you use, a visual could be something as simple as a blackboard that you're writing on. Uh, it could be a piece of paper. Uh, it could be uh, a picture or a video. Um, the visual is also dependent on the data or the information you're trying to convey. Uh, it doesn't always have to be data based. So information and creating visuals for this is not new. Uh, and I'm not pretending that it is. But why it's important to think about uh, visuals and visualization is because that image creates way more connections in the brain and it helps people to remember and it helps people to process information faster and with more clarity. And so when you look at the science of visuals, there's a really good reason why when we are trying to be effective communicators that we think about how we can visually present the things that we want to do. And again, none of this is new and we are used to all sorts of static visual images, all right? This is a visual. I just use it as an example, but one of the things I'm gonna to try to do this afternoon is really, um, draw from our migration knowledge and our settlement knowledge. So here is actually what I think uh, is a very good example of a visual that uh, communicates a message clearly um, and is supported, the ideas are supported by pictures. This is a very impressive visual um, drawn from The Economist. Uh, it's actually, it, it's not interactive, it's static, uh, and, but there's a lot happening here. And there's a lot of data here. Um, I use it again as only of an example of a visual. Here it simply is showing you the, the diaspora of the Syrian refugee uh, population who are internally and externally displaced and where they're at. Um, another example of a visual. Here's another one. Also, it looks pretty, but you have to spend a little bit of time with it. Uh, I found this, uh, uh, you know, both the other one and this one uh, harder to understand. Uh, but here you can see uh, the gray bars are a percentage of labor force composed of migrants. So in Saudi Arabia, 84% of the labor force is uh, composed of migrants. Um, in Canada, it's 24%. And the labor, the percentage of labor for 
workforce growth between 2000 and 2014 is this little arrow with the number. And for candidates, a 42% growth over that time period is attributed to um, migration. So, so it's a pretty funky slide, but it took a, took a little while to figure out exactly what it was trying to say. Which brings me to an important point. And that is, is that data is only as useful as our ability to understand it. And Lord knows that you can make pretty pictures, but they might not necessarily communicate. And here are some non-migration, quite happily, uh, uh, images that, oh my goodness, like they're very nice looking, but you have to work really hard to understand them. So underlying all of the things that I'm gonna be talking about this afternoon is this idea about how do you take data and make it digestible, make it easy to understand, make it uh, able to communicate what it is you're trying to say. So it's not just about pretty pictures. Uh, it's a, really about communicating the ideas. And that will be important because some of these look really fancy and fancy doesn't always mean as we saw from the, uh, the economist one, it's quite a lovely slide, but there's, it was hard to communicate what it was trying to say, in my opinion. So objective number one, what is data visualization? We talked about visuals. We talked about these beautiful graphs, these visual images, whether data-based or whether just uh, communicating ideas. Data visualization is a little bit different, although the whole field is evolving. And so some people you'll find will talk about data visualization and they're actually talking about visuals. But for the most part, for those of us now deep into data visualization, the real key is that it's interactive actually real-time interactive. Um, and because it's interactive, it's supposed to facilitate understanding because people are able to search and find meaning in the data themselves. And so the three main things that make a visualization or a visual of a, a data visualization is that you can explore it and it has an interface that's easy to use and that it's interactive. But let me give you an example. And so now what I think I have to do is I'm going to go to the link and then I'm going to do a new share. I'm saying this out loud to help me make sure I do this properly. And I'm really hoping you can see that just like me. And if you can't, again, will probably tell me, right? Yes, we can see it perfectly. All right. So this is an example of an interactive data visualization. It's one of my favorites. This is a, a, a color representation. You may have seen it before. Up here, you can see that it's been, uh, the data has been sliced, we call it, in different increments of five years. All right, so when I click on these buttons, I get a different data visualization over a certain period of time. If I click on North America, you see that Canada and the United States are broken out. And then if I hit Canada, I can take my, my cursor and look and say, oh, for South Asia uh, in 2005 to 2010, 382,168 people migrated. And then if I go, gee, that's kind of interesting. Uh, here's South Asia, it gets broken down. And then I can see from Pakistan over that time period, there were 88,678. And I can, depending on what my in interest is, interact with this data and draw that data out in both a visual and, and a number format. All right, so I'm gonna try and leave this now and go back. So that's a data visualization. 
Next step is what is a dashboard? Because people are gonna talk about dashboards when they talk about data visualization. And a dashboard is a collection of data visualizations that are linked together. They're a visual display of key information um, and it fits on one screen. And um, it's basically a type of display or a presentation format. Uh, and it doesn't have to be any kind of specific information, but they tend to be uh, data driven. So they're drawing data in uh, and usually it has a lot to do with um, real time data, which is actually quite exciting. The idea behind dashboards are that they're supposed to help with information overload. So instead of seeing graph after graph after graph and then starting to lose track, uh, you have this one format where you can interact with a number of different data sources that are relevant to you in, an, in a way that is meaningful. And then you don't have to worry about the rest or try to extrapolate what's going on um, from many, many, many different graphs. Sometimes a dashboard is also called a canvas. Um, much more than a pretty picture, although they are and can tend to be very uh, aesthetically pleasing when done correctly. Uh, it's interactive, which is what we're talking about for data visualizations. And one of the most exciting things for me is that when you create them, they can be uh, updated in real time. So when your data is updated, the visuals automatically get updated. Uh, and so it can be incredibly powerful because you don't have to wait uh, for updates in data. You don't have to go back and create new images. All of the data is simply uploaded again in the format and you can continue to uh, interact with the dashboard in real time, depending on the data source. So you add more data and the whole visual just updates itself, which is pretty exciting for a data geek like me. So if you're thinking about, oh my gosh, what's a dashboard, perhaps, You've taken a look at the BC COVID-19 dashboard. I, I promise this is the only one that's not migration focused, but I think um, for many people, this was one of the first introductions to a data visualization dashboard. And um, I will just, I'll go in here so that you can take a look. So there's lots of things happening. This is a very fancy schmancy one, I have to say. But if you've not interacted with this, you can see and just watching my cursor here, you can say, I'm just interested in Vancouver Island. I wanna know what's happening in Vancouver Island. And you can see the distribution of people who have been, uh, uh, has, have fallen ill from COVID. You can look at the gender, you see how I'm, trolling through these. These are static, but if I move to interior, you can see that those numbers get updated. So they provide a summary guideline. And then if you can see down here, there's also things that can happen so that you can look at vaccine information, searched by health authority, and even vaccine type, right? And so depending on what's of interest to you, you can do this. And then there's also summary data right here for you to see. And, and this is an example of a dashboard and uh, a data visualization that has a number of, uh, a dashboard that has a number of different data visualizations embedded in it. And, uh, and this is what we're gonna be practicing using and then thinking about our data and then I'm gonna show you how easy it is to put one of these together. Um, maybe not quite so fancy, but certainly within our capabilities. So let me go back. Hope I'm not making you too uh, dizzy. Okay, so just to, just to summarize, this is a visual. It's a beautiful visual um, drawing on data 
Looking at the books is really quite nice because you're talking about students and you can see the increase with a lovely background. We call this a visual. This is also another great visual. One of the uh, interesting things about data visualizations is even though they are interactive, you can make visuals from them. You can just say, you know, I'm gonna upload this visual and it can become a static uh, data visualization and it can become a static visual if you want to use it that way. So this is a visual. This is also a visual obviously, but it's not data driven. It's simply a, uh, providing visual cues to help the processing of information. This is a dashboard with multiple data visualizations. Um, I'm going to, uh, and, and it's uh, interactive and it's migration focused. So I'm not sure if you know about this website. Um, I've made sure that I've actually, for all the slides, left the links in case you want to go back and use any of this data. Uh, I find it, I find them quite helpful. And, um, and as we look at migration and settlement and see the kind of data visualizations that are already being produced, I'm hoping that might spark some ideas for you in your practice and work. So if I do, I'm gonna, give me a second, I'm gonna upload this and do a new share. I think I'm getting the hang of it. All right, so you can, this is really quite interesting. Um, you can pick a country. So we're gonna pick Canada and in, oh, stay here, Canada. Um, and, and it actually gives you the number of refugees by year since 1951. And it actually also shows you the refugee population change over that same period of time. And uh, it, so if that is something of interest to you, uh, that would be you know, great data that's right there uh, that you can manipulate to understand what's going on. And then you know, by country of asylum, you would be able to you would be able to actually look at specific country origins and where people are coming from. So, uh, you know, we can we can see perhaps uh, right. And so now I've clicked on India and for Canada in terms of where they're coming from over the time period. You can see a small population of refugees from India from 1990 onwards. Right, so very quickly, if you wanted to start by big picture level story, you can draw on these resources that are already here through data visualization to get exactly what you need to get. And um, I would argue quite quickly, rather than looking at a lot of graphs and then trying to create your own. All right, so I go back, enough of me talking. Um, I think to really appreciate data visualizations, you need to interact with them yourself. So we are going to launch into our first breakout group. Um, each one of the breakout groups is going to have a link to a data visualization different than the ones that I have shown you. They're all migration or settlement focused. Um, they are all interactive. What I'd like you to do is to uh, download or click on the link um, in your uh, uh, web browser and play. Uh, push the buttons, see what it does, and think about um, how it feels. Like, is it clear? Uh, is it hard to find the information you want? Uh, what kind of story would you tell based on the data that's being provided? How would you use it in your practice potentially? Um, and then talk in your group about like what it means and, and, and what you think about it as, uh, as a format choice. Uh, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna come back and I there's four 
uh, different ones. Um, potentially two or three groups will be assigned to a single data visualization. And um, please pick someone to share uh, just a few insights from the discussion in the group. What I will do is bring up each one of the data visualizations because I think they're all different and interesting. And we'll briefly hear from the groups and I'll do the manipulations in case you want me to show something um, as I share my screen. All right, so I'm gonna stop sharing at the moment to let Nagin help you put, uh, put you into groups. Uh, we'll have about 15 minutes um, to do this and then we'll come back and share. And I hope you enjoy because some of them are pretty funky. And let's see what you think of the data visualizations and dashboards I've picked for you. Welcome back from your breakout room. Well, it, I'm not sure how you guys did on that. Um, you can give us some feedback. Uh, I don't think that the Jamboard was functioning, but hopefully you were able to link uh, to the data visualization and dashboards uh, for the most part. Um, I'm hoping that we can uh, have a quick discussion but uh, if you were able to um, manage a data visualization, if you had not before, if you hadn't done the COVID dashboard or uh, another one that was either work practice or uh, uh, you know, general interest related, congratulations because you are now a data visualization user. Um, and I think, uh, I think that's actually really important to understand that the nature of how um, we are being provided with data has shifted. And I think it happened quietly, but it is, um, it's really critical. How we're consuming data is phenomenally different than a static image. Our expectations about how we use data are shifting. And even um, for general interest, uh, this will become more prevalent. This will become common practice. So as PowerPoint slides were for presentation skills, uh, I strongly predict that these data visualization dashboards and interactive visuals are going to be the bread and butter of what we do in the future. And so um, if nothing else out of this session this afternoon, you can become more aware uh, of the kinds of visuals people are presenting to you in, in real life and know that there is a real fundamental shift happening. Uh, the technology uh, that is underlying this is phenomenal, um, but it's also easy to use and many of the tools are free. And so this really will become ubiquitous in not too long because it is accessible, which is again why I think, um, you know, looking at migration data and seeing what's possible and understanding that we really have important stories to tell and understanding where the technology is going and what kind of tools are available for us to tell that story in a compelling way is really important to the sector. So again, I thank you for spending the time. But what we're gonna do is just spend a little bit of time on these examples. And again, I apologize, I'm gonna shift back and forth because I want that interactivity in my presentation with you today. But we have a few groups that were able to look at um, this stat, uh, let's just grab it. All right, so this one is a, from Statistics Canada. It's based on census data. So the data is good for 2016. Um, and it looks at the proportion of mother tongue responses for regions in Canada. Um, now, I'm hoping that people, Nagin, I'm not quite sure how that should happen. Um, I would like uh, people to either raise their hand so we can unmute you if you've been designated to say a few words because you interacted with this visual. 
I'd love to hear from you based on some of my questions about what did you think about it and how might you use it and you know what was good and what perhaps was challenging. Rachel, thank you. Hi. And I will, if you want to show something, I'll do the, I'll, I'll press all the buttons for you. Okay, sounds good. Um, yeah, so our group, we were able to explore this page. Um, we thought for the most part, it was quite easy and straightforward to navigate. Um, one of the things we didn't realize at the beginning was if you go to the where your cursor is, you have the geography. Um, so I know myself, I did kind of just went straight into the data visual first without looking at that. So, um, but for those of you who didn't explore it, you can break down basically the different mother tongues per province and per the country, and then also per some specific cities in different provinces. Um, so like Vancouver's on there, Squamish, all different. Um, and then you can break it down through the official languages, the uh, Aboriginal languages, and then the immigrant languages. So, I mean, if you wanna click on the immigrant one, um, and then if you just scroll down a bit and you hover, um, so if you just hover your cursor over one of the circles, it'll tell you, so the total number of the people who speak that language, what percent that makes of the total population, and then the percent of the immigration, uh, immigrant language, sorry. Um, so yeah, we thought for the most part, it was quite straightforward and we liked that it had um, all this, I don't know if it's flexibility, but all the different ways that you can see this data. So you can see it through the actual circle and the visual, but then if you, and then like you're showing, you can go to specific cities, which I was fascinated by. And then you can also scroll down and it gives you just a complete list. Um, so if it's easier for you to see a list, um, I like we liked how it gave people different options because people are different when it comes to visualizing data, it, some forms work better for others. So for some, they might like just seeing the list and it kind of goes down in size. Um, so yeah, that was kind of our feedback from this one. That's great. And I have two other raised hands. Let's see if I can find out who they are. Uh, I can now send verbal feedback. I don't want to know that. Uh, Nadine. So I definitely, I think uh, Rachel brought up a lot of really great points and it's really interesting to see how the data is presented in different ways. I do think that interactivity is a bit limited in terms of like the visualization, but because we see these great, you know, circle representations of like English, French, immigrant languages, and you can click into it, but maybe like, it seems like you can only click into immigrant languages. It would be interesting if there was like added interactivity into the actual visuals. Uh -huh. Yeah, so you could, you know, if you could break it out a little bit more in terms of, I guess here you have for Cranbook, you know, the breakout generally speaking, but what are you saying? For immigrant languages, what would you have rather have seen? So um, I, yeah, I guess like I think you do need some time to explore the tool and kind of see how the interactivity functions. But I guess like, so you can get, how did you get the town onto the main screen? How did yeah. I get what? Like um, how you can get like Cranbrook at like the top in terms wow. of, so it's just on the geography under the menu. One of the things about the data visualizations is they're oh, like, you, it's kind of like uh, at Christmas time with the advent calendar, you, you open up the box and you see what's inside or the, the, the little window. So there's, there tends to be a lot of drop down menus. So instead of getting a whole bunch of graphs, they give you a drop down menu and you sort of pick and choose what you want. And so if we were looking at, I was trying to go to BC, let's go to Dawson Creek. Now, I've, now I'm, so you have to pay attention to what the data is actually telling you. This geography is Dawson Creek, BC, immigrant languages. And then if we wanted to understand what was happening, it has all the numbers. So, and then if again, 
this will only be applicable to Dawson Creek and you can see what the percentage is in terms of, you know, 89.7% uh, have English and then you have 9.9%. So depending on the story you want to tell, right? Depending on the story you want to tell, some of this information could be really helpful. Um, whether it is that you're seeking um, somebody with certain language skills because you have a group that uh, is growing in a particular region, uh, whether you see the proportion of immigrant languages increasing relative to English or French, depending on the region. Um, looking at the, you know, I, my, I, I'm quite certain that once you get uh, the next census, there'll be 2016 census and then the 2021 census when it's completed. And they'll do something comparative so that you can see the changes. So, um, yeah, I, uh, I think that, you know, more data is better, but there's some nice drill down there. I found personally that, you know, this is kind of sneaky to have Canada, the provinces, and then the, what we call them, the census metropolitan areas. Uh, all in the same thing. I know it falls under geography, but you might miss the specific cities if you're only looking at the provinces. That might be my thing, but I think this is a, a great one to have in your favorites file. Uh, and if that's uh, something that you are interested in looking at and drawing data from for communication. All right, now the next one. Again, forgive me, I'm going to come back. So this is another one from uh, Statistics Canada. Um, can I get somebody to who has uh, interacted with this to say a little bit about it as I get it up on the actual screen? Yeah, so I can speak to it. So this was a Statistics Canada um, interactive chart talk, talking about the economic outcomes of immigrants. And it was a very data rich uh, visualization. And we're looking at lots of different things, geography of residents, immigrant admission category, gender, language, pre-admission experience, admission year, and a whole bunch of other ways to splice the data, including like median wages, um, employment insurance benefits, et cetera. Um, and so one of the things we noticed at the beginning was in contrast to the last chart, that you showed on languages. This one doesn't have as many drop down menus. I mean, it's different. We have some drop down menus at the top, but closer to the bottom, you actually have buttons, which is kind of nice. You'll see the admission category. So a little bit more um, laid out in that respect. So it was nice to see differences. Um, in general, we thought that the data was clear, um, but because it's so rich, it really is the kind of thing that you have to take time to explore and really narrow down to what you're, you want to see. Um, we noticed that the help button, if you click on the help button, it had a short um, brief describer of each graph, which was very useful, although that wasn't very obvious to us. You know, it's, it's at the bottom, essentially, of the screen. And one thing someone noticed from my team was that if you look at the line graph, which is the main visual on the page. I'll just wait till you get there. Sorry. Yeah. If you, graph. It was it was more or less on the yeah. If if you go on to the main admission category, ours looked a little bit different than what we see there. Um, but in the main line graph, if you were to hover on the top right corner of the of the box it actually allows you to export the data. It allows you to spotlight the graph. Yeah, if you see there, it popped up in the right-hand corner. So you can filter, oh. you can focus. <laughs> yeah, it kind of pops of away if you're not looking, yeah. And I think my, well, no, no, it should, but currently selected doesn't tell me. Yeah, just if you, if you just hold your mouse there, it'll pop up. Hold your mouse at the top right corner of that particular graph. It comes up with a filter. There you go. You see that right up at the top corner? Yeah. And it allows you to do that. But again, that wasn't obvious. It was the kind of thing that you, if you happen to be hovering and looking in that direction, you might notice. So um, we like it. It's very visually, aesthetically pleasing. 
very um, data rich, but complicated takes takes a while to look at. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I really appreciate that. I, you know, I could probably spend hours on this. I think you would have to be, again, a great one to, to tab and say it's part of your favorites because boy, if you wanted to get information rather than pouring over, you know, table after table, you will be able to draw from this, but it's a lot. And so again, it's something to keep in mind. Great resource, have to spend time, depending on who the data is for and how they're going to be using it, might be too much. And honestly, if you need to have a help button to figure out how to navigate a dashboard, it's probably got a little bit too much in it um, in terms of best practice about a developing or creating one. But I really appreciate that this exists. And I think, again, in, in our practice, if you're interested in provincially or um, at a census level, like a, uh, a major uh, geographical region, unfortunately, it's not every single city, but this, metropo this idea about a metropolitan area, um, you'd be able to get a lot of data from this. Um, and uh, let's see, it actually ties things in, in terms of uh, uh, indicators, labor force indicators, um, uh, employment and things like that, which I know in the settlement sector are really important to see how particular groups that you're working with are doing. So um, was there somebody else before I go back and forth? Was there somebody else? I can't see the hands up, but um, did, did another group look at this and have anything to add? Okay, well, we'll move on. We'll get to the next one. The next one and the last one. Um, who took a look at this one? Hi, Sandra, it's Jennifer here from Douglas. Uh, our group, Group 8, took a look at this one and it's, it's kind of similar to what the comments were in the last group uh -huh. in terms of it's really rich with data. Um, when we came into it, at least I was a little bit intimidated and overwhelmed, but we all took our time to scan it and, and uh, use our document use skills to try and figure out what this was telling us. And then we realized just how much data was in here. Um, it, um, you know, I think we concluded that it was a really good website if you, if you were looking for something specific or you were here for a purpose. For a general user like myself, when I came in here, as, as I said, I was a bit overwhelmed and I, I didn't know where to start, but there's tons of data in there. And I'm gonna just pass it over to you, Cole, or anybody else in my group, Ingrid, um, Suzanne, anybody else wanna say anything about what we concluded? Do you wanna uh, walk us through just a few things so people, like I, ag I agree, like these are incredibly, dense, sophisticated dashboards. I've gone high level for you to see what's possible, um, but I completely agree. These are difficult to navigate and I appreciate that they're giving you lots of information, but even now to, to navigate in these is not that easy, but what you, was there something that you saw that you went, wow, that's actually really powerful. I'm glad to know that's here. I can launch in, but anyone else in my group or the other groups that looked at this, please oh, launch Oh, I'll in. just yeah. add to what, this is Yuko, I'll just add to what Thank Jennifer you. was saying for our group. Um, we did notice though that um, when you hover over top of like, um, like a link, it does give you, for some of them, the original source. So if you couldn't digest the information from this map, it actually has like clickable links to the original source. So perhaps the data in the original source would be more, more narrow and specific to what you're looking for. But I think most of us in the group decided this is, um, it's quite overwhelming. And I think it was Ingrid, I think Ingrid, you noticed that um, there is a, like a user guide uh, like a frequently asked questions area where you could get more information on how to use this particular tool, which as you mentioned, Sandra earlier might not be, if you need a user guide, then there's probably like overwhelming amount of information on here. 
but this is like this is the so obviously migration and i would also argue settlement data is 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 dense and there's lots of information and ways to slice and dice and so even developing the skills and being prepared mentally to start being able to be good at navigating with these kinds of tools, I think, is going to be a, a, like a key success factor in the future for people. Um, I can tell you, I spend a lot of time on this dashboard because I look at more comparative data in my research, but what I like is the summary statistics right here. And so less so the visuals, which is an interesting comment, but that if I needed to say, you know, Canada ranks 12 on human development, or I have, I have all these major indicators and uh, whatever country uh, or region that I'm interested in speaking about all in one place. And let me tell you that that saves a lot of time if you're if you're working with this kind of data so uh, you know summarizing some of this is is also it can be really powerful but yeah there's a lot happening here um, the nice thing about this is that in many instances you can link to get uh, additional resources which i find helpful and it, it is linked so that you can get the data yourself. So if you're more proficient and you want to take some data and combine it with an, a, a different spreadsheet that you have, then uh, you can actually pull the data from this very, very big data set. And uh, yeah, I just, again, I'm, I'm not sure whether you knew about the Statistics Canada uh, tools and some of the, the the pan national or the international uh, tools about migration. But when you're trying to situate your work and understand what's happening in the world, these might be sources that you go to just to get people thinking about what the impacts are. And then I'm going to come back. Did I get everybody or did I skip one? I think I got. I think I covered everything. Anyways, there are some resources for you. And this slide is for you to be able to clear your mind because I know I've been going back and forth. I know um, looking at graphs too much makes my eyes cross and I do it a lot. And so for some of you that might just be like, oh, okay, I'm now already in overload. What the heck is she gonna do with me now? But, um, the objective for that first part was really to see what's been happening and quietly, like, you know, quietly. But these, um, we should make sure as a sector uh, that, we, that we utilize what's available um, to tell our story. And so just being aware and uh, not, not feeling overwhelmed when you get to a site and saying, okay, this is an interactive. What I need to do is really understand what it is I'm looking for and pull the data out and get out of there, right? Because it could be a deep, dark hole if you just keep pushing buttons, it won't mean anything after a while. But if you say, I'm really interested in what's happening to a particular um, uh, migration group or category, uh, based on a certain characteristic and how that differs across a different region, then, you know, make sure that you take note of some of the data visualization dashboards that um, are becoming more and more prevalent uh, related to migration and settlement. So, but now that's not all, we got another breakout group. Hopefully we can get everybody in that needs to. Um, in the breakout for this one, we're just talking um, and we're going to be talking about data. And there are two questions and we're gonna have 20 minutes. Uh, the data uh, that you have and how you're using it. Uh, I'm sure uh, either within your organization or you specifically are responsible for some kind of collection of data. Uh, um, what are you doing with it? And, um, and who are you sharing it with? And why is it important? 
And then uh, if you can have a conversation about, oh, if I could have this data, then um, that would be perfect because I would pair it with this and that would make my story complete. And so uh, along the continuum, knowing the data visualization tools, very important, knowing how to interact with them, very important. But now let's talk about data. Let's talk about what we have and the stories we want to tell. So uh, with that, uh, we are gonna try Jamboard again, but otherwise when we come back from this breakout, uh, you will have the option of either putting uh, a Jamboard sticky note or a few ideas or summary into uh, the Jamboard. And I think it's going to be number 13, according to McGean. Hopefully she will prompt you with that. And otherwise um, you can put up your hand and, and just talk like a regular person or put something in the chat box. You don't have to use Jamboard, especially if Jamboard's not working, that's a really good thing. But it will be relatively open about how we want to share what's happening with our data and the kind of data we might want but not have. All right, so good luck to everybody finding their way in and um, I'll poke in and see how everybody's doing, uh, but uh, 10 minutes per question and we'll all come back together again. Uh, and then I'll show you how you can make your own data visualizations after we have a little bit of a conversation about our own data. Hello everyone. I'm sorry I brought you back a little bit early. I do want to make sure that um, we get through everything. I think also thinking about data requires quite a bit of reflection. Um, I think you guys did a fabulous job, really fabulous job. Thank you so much. And as you can see, we've got our breakout uh, Jamboard and lots of good data. Uh, when I look at it, I think, oh, you know what? It's great. Collecting all this data is phenomenal. Uh, using it only to report in, only, but to report in annual reports is great, but it has the opportunity to do so much more in terms of sharing internally, uh, analysis wise, and also um, beyond the annual report, talking to funders and other organizations as well. Um, you can take all that data and put it together to create a few visualizations on a dashboard to share internally within your organization or to very easily create visuals to support things like annual reports. Um, thank you to the group that put the number two needs assessment of community and at-risk members in the community to address needs. I think thinking about those data sources, where would you get that data? How would you access it? And one of the things that I have found in my research is if you ask, even if it's not publicly available, people, there is a, a growing uh, interest in sharing data because being able to make uh, good arguments or decisions based on data is something that uh, very happily is quite supported at the moment. Um, and so I, I think there are lots of ways that you would be able to look at that data literacy skills. Do we understand what we are seeing and saying? That's great. All right, um, keep that in the back of your heads. We're going to um, get out of Jamboard right now. Okay, so we know a little bit about data visualization. We've played around with it a bit and we've thought about our data. Now we're gonna very quickly explore in the last 20 minutes or so, what's involved in creating data visualizations, these interactive things. And there's all these very important steps that academics like to put together, starting with a topic that's pretty straightforward, identifying the data. Sometimes you have it, sometimes you want it, Sometimes you can find it, sometimes you can't. But identifying the data that you might need, designing and building it, hmm, 
testing, refining, publishing, analyzing, revising, and refreshing. I know, I know that sounds so easy, right? Well, seriously, it is. It's really easy and it's so easy. I am going to attempt to show you relatively live, I've prepped a few things about what's involved. Now, um, before I do that, here's a proviso. I work with um, a data visualization tool called Power BI, it's a Microsoft product, um, and it's free. Uh, if you start using it a lot and sharing it and wanting to do certain more fancy things, developer things, there's a small cost. Um, but there are lots of data visualization tools. This workshop is not about you necessarily, me recommending a data visualization tool. There are a number out there, but just to show you where the technology has gone. So here's a Power BI tool. And you can see here, there's a little button and it says get data. And if you click on this, you can get data from just about anywhere. Um, you can get it from the open portal of uh, uh, Statistics Canada. Uh, I'll show that to you in a little bit. Or you can import data from an Excel spreadsheet. So if you actually had information about your, uh, uh, your uh, group in terms of their volunteers and the volunteer hours and uh, a number of different aspects about that. And it was in an Excel spreadsheet. You would simply import the information from Power BI here. And let's see here. So you, uh, you need a new share here, right? Uh, all right. So here you have Statistics Canada and open data. This has an IRCC data set. And this is important to me because I'm doing a project with the UBC Data Hub to create visuals from this IRCC data. And when you go into this kind of uh, open portal, it has not just for resettled refugees, but permanent residents, transition from temporary foreign workers to permanent residents, asylum seekers, adoptions, every combination and permutation you can think of. If you haven't been here, you might want to take a look. There's a lot of data. It's free and it's accessible. Uh, for the purposes of this afternoon, you can see that um, there is something here called Canada Admissions of Resettled Refugees by Province and Census Metropolitan Area uh, based on immigration category. So they've got a lot of different uh, variables that they're looking at there. I am going to uh, show you that I have imported that data directly from the website and then fixed it up a little bit. And I'm going to try and do a new share with you. Hopefully this works. Can you see that okay? Hopefully. Yes, we so can. This is Power BI. I have just imported what was basically an Excel spreadsheet. Um, this is in the data format and you can see there's the province and territory, the metropolitan area, the different kinds of sponsorship and total. Pretty straightforward. When I go and I hit my little graph and I here on this side, you can see, do you remember there was blended, there was government supported, there was private province and census. So if I say, I start clicking on some of these. I'm gonna unclick this one. So you can see automatically my graph is being made and I can do that and automatically change this. It's not so different from Excel a little bit. But then my filter is province and territory. And oh, uh, my filter is province and territory, or is it? 
uh, here. Let's see. All right. I am going to go down here if I can. So I'm going to select all. So here you can see all the provinces and territories broken down by blended. And then you see the number. You see the number, right? But then you say, you know what? Uh, I don't really care about all the provinces. I'm really interested. And you can see here, it says province and territory. This is just my working field right now. I'm actually, I'm, I'm actually just interested. Let's see, did I go down? No, I'm actually just interested in Alberta. And I want to compare it to British Columbia and Ontario. And you go, hmm, so that's interesting. A lot bigger in Ontario. Uh, BC and Alberta about the same. Okay, but maybe I don't care so much about the provinces. Maybe what I really want to do is look at the metropolitan area. And you go, oh my gosh, there's way too many here. Look at all of these. That's way too much data and it's not helpful to me. So what am I really looking at here? I, what I want is to look at, let's see, I wanna look at Abbotsford. And I want to compare it to Kamloops and Kelowna. And maybe I want to change my graph. Well, it doesn't work at all, does it now? But maybe this does. Ah, OK. So that's really quite interesting because there are no government sponsored government assisted refugees over a five year period, six year period uh, in the Kamloops area. So maybe that's something that's of interest to you. And then if you wanted to, you could publish this. And what that means is that you would share that data. It will still be searchable, um, but now you're making it more public. And so if I click publish, I want to save these changes. I'll save it to my workspace. I'll replace what I just was doing because I was practicing for the purposes of this workshop. So you have a spreadsheet. You learn a little bit about how you manipulate it in terms of what are basically pivot tables if you're used to working in uh, uh, Excel and everything is done for you and you publish it. And so it says successful, which is great. Now I can share that data visualization with others, but here's, here's, here's something really sweet. I'm gonna click this thing called get quick insights. And can you still see the screen? Yes, we can. Great. So what Power BI has done for me is taken all the data and created a quick series of its own graphs with insights they think I might be interested in. And so here they've told me for blended uh, sponsorship refugees, Charlottetown accounts for the majority of blended sponsorship in Prince Edward Island. So if I was interested in Prince Edward Island, that might be of interest to me. Uh, I think this is quite interesting. Toronto and Montreal have noticeably more private sponsored refugees than any other. Um, Sandra, sorry, we don't see uh, the quick insights. Okay. It opened in a different window and we just see the, uh, the table. All right, so. that's great. Thank you very much. Let's see. Can you see it now? Can you see it now? Yes, yes. we can. Thank Perfect. you. Perfect, because it's important because I didn't make any of these slides, the computer program did. And um, you can choose to pin it, you can choose to uh, copy it, include it in your dashboard. Here you can see Ontario has noticeably more government assisted refugees. You know, for me, I would say, hmm, why is that? 
why why do they have noticeably more government assisted refugees than other categories um uh, it seems the majority of them are going to Ontario and it's not proportionate to the other provinces. And so it, it goes on and on. Some of the insights less relevant, but it looks for insights into the data. And so as soon as you just build or import your Excel spreadsheet or an Excel spreadsheet from someplace else that you want to analyze, it will create all of these for you. And then all you need to do is put it on a canvas and share it. So uh, you don't have to be a developer to do some very uh, interesting, compelling, interactive uh, images and generate insights from data. And that will allow you to start using data um, for decision-making, for analysis, and you can do it in real time. So I created that uh, spreadsheet, but um, if the data was, I, I tend to link the government data directly from the website because they update it monthly. And when I go and uh, refresh, the new data is already there and I have the visual by the month and you can do that with your Excel spreadsheets or however you have your data as well. So I am going to try and go back to my presentation. That's enough going back and forth, but I, I did, I just wanted to give you an opportunity to see um, that it doesn't have to be this big deal. The technology is going, um, is so powerful now and it's so accessible. And so I would encourage you uh, to think about uh, starting to explore data visualization tools. And uh, I'm happy I'll provide my, uh, my coordinates afterwards. I'm happy to talk to you about different visualization tools. Uh, uh, I don't have a lot of experience with a, a lot of them, but I'm very happy with the one that I use. And really what you're trying to do is think about the context and the story that you want to talk about. Think about a visual display that isn't too busy, but provides interactivity so that people can get the information that they need and want. And think a little bit about a, yourself as a designer, um, but know that the technology is there to support you. Don't make it too cluttery, which is really easy to do if you have a lot of data, maybe just do a different dashboard or share a few slides to tell your story. And I'm actually quite interested uh, in knowing what your wish list is. I'm just checking the time uh, and uh, taking just a few minutes to tell you about uh, the project that I'm working on that has really made me uh, jump into the deep end with data visualization. And that is um, my association with the UBC Center for Migration Studies. Um, we're doing a data hub project. And so uh, in my slides, that open data that you can get from the government of Canada, um, I'm basically going to be creating dashboards uh, of that data that will update in real time the government of Canada and IRCC don't do that, um, but we are working in conjunction with them and all of that information will be available at the UBC migration website. So I'm not pulling in a whole bunch of different data sources yet, but in future UBC has committed to building these kinds of data visualizations to help um, the BC settlement sector and also other researchers and people who want to educate on migration because the data is there. It's just not really all that pretty and it's hard to, um, to go back in and always update it. And so our hope is that we will have a lot of data available on our website in the next three or four weeks. And if there's something you really, really want, please let me know and I will um, make sure that uh, I try and slip it in there for you. But we will have things on 
um, refugee and the settlement sector because that is available to us. Um, uh, temporary foreign workers. Uh, we will be doing something on transitioning and uh, permanent residents. Uh, but the opportunity for you to ask for data uh, is absolutely there, uh, both through me and through the Center for Migration Studies. So um, the other thing is if you, uh, if you start thinking about shared data or data that you have, that you want to have visualizations created for and you're willing to share it, um, maybe not specific, but through AMSA, uh, I'm really happy to talk and, and uh, work through what that might look like so that it's a resource. So sometimes benchmarking and just understanding, you know, um, comparative things is really helpful. But um, really, data visualizations, you now have a word for what you've probably already been interacting with. Um, they are uh, a game changer, I think. And I think that they are going to be part and parcel of the way that we communicate with people and the way we interact with data. So I hope that um, now you sort of have a vocabulary for that and start thinking and paying attention to what's going on. But really the big takeaway is these tools aren't that hard to use yourself to create interactions uh, and even more deeply communicate your story. And that um, I would encourage you to use uh, data partners like the government of Canada and hopefully UBC migration to think about the data that you need and to start asking for it because creating those visual images that you can interact with professionally that help you do what you want to do in the best way possible is within our reach. Um, and I hope that this has been helpful and I uh, have a few resources. I am going, I'm going to share my slides so that uh, all the different data visualizations and resources are all linked. And so you will have that at your disposal. And I really do hope that you contact me. Um, I have asked uh, AMSA, I will send out an email after. You can reflect and take all this in. And then, um, and I'm happy to take some questions uh, in the last uh, few minutes that we have together. Um, but if you have an ask or you're interested in asking more direct questions about your data, I'm really more than happy uh, to communicate with you. And I hope you see my email at the end and we'll be in touch. So thank you very much. We have a few minutes left together. I thank everybody for being so patient and interactive themselves. And uh, I, I, I see there's one question, but we're also gonna do the chat. So shall I take Diana's question? And then Sabrina, you can prompt me for any of the questions that are in the chat box. Perfect. Excellent. Okay. Hi, Diana. <laughs> Hi, Sandra. Thank you so much for this. Um, completely understand if you can't take my question right now, but you were asking about our wish list and one of the, the visualizations I saw for Stat Canada didn't allow us to interactively show comparisons like males versus females. And that's something that I think would be part of my wish list is if there is some interactivity, we could go in and drill down what we're trying to compare and be able to see the little snapshot of, of, of that line graph or whatever it is. And of course, I just wanted to say thank you. This was great. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Well, you know, I, I'm not a data nerd and I've become a data nerd because of the tools that are available. So I'm, I'm happy to share. Um, I think that comparative thing, thank you. That's a, a large part of what uh, all those tables that the open data has that you don't get the nuance for because you can't interact with it, so um, I'll make sure. And are there any other questions? 
So there's been a lot of comments, Sandra, in the chat regarding this, you know, thanking you for the for all this food for thought and for this workshop, but there hasn't been any questions. So, um, oh, one one more que one question has popped up. Um, just around the, the, the software platform that you were using, um, Power BI, in regards to, do you know if the data is stored locally or where that data information is stored? Uh, so they have different data hubs. Um, you, if, un unless you share the data, right? Unless you share the data and publish it, that data isn't stored anywhere except for where you store it if that makes sense. And if you're pulling it from a website, that data is stored in that location. Okay, so if you have um, data, uh, so what I can tell you is that Power BI is widely used um, and is the underlying uh, technology for a lot of the Stats Canada data visualizations. Um, Tableau is another one, uh, ArcGIS is another one. And so, um, uh, yeah, the government of Canada is one of the largest users of Power BI. The data stays with you. And depending on where you share it, that's the only place that it goes. Perfect. Thank you so much um, for, for clarifying and for, for answering. Um, and so there's a lot of great comments and feedbacks um, and so this was a really appreciated um this this session today and i don't see any more questions coming up in the chat or any hands raised so i think we'll just i mean we're almost out of time so i think we'll just go to, to the final closing um and i just wanted to say thank you so much sandra so thank you for for such an informative presentation and and for getting us all excited about data and what we can do in terms of visualization um, so I just want to say thank you to, to everyone for your participation um, and, and the breakouts and for your interactivity. Um, we will be sending out an evaluation and your feedback is, is very important to us. And Nagin will be sending out the evaluation link um, as well as including the, the message from, from Sandra and the, the PowerPoint slides after this lecture. And so we do have one more lecture coming up shortly. And this may be of one that's also of, of a great interest to, to many of you. And so it's on the, the settlement sector and technology. And in this lecture, um, which will be led by Marco Campana, we'll, we'll hear about the results from the study that was um, conducted this spring in regards to the settlement sector and technology. Um, and the, the lecture will be held on March 29th from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. And so please look um, for the, the registration has gone out for that. And if you if you don't have it or, or have any challenges or questions, please feel free to connect with Nagin. Um, and once again, we'd like to thank our funder, Immigration, Refugees and Citizenship Canada, for funding today's event. Um, thank you so much to, to everyone for your participation. Um, thank you to the AMSA team behind the scene. And Sandra, thank you so much and hope you all have a great day. You're welcome. Can I take one more thing before, before we say goodbye? Because Go I saw it in the comments and I think it's absolutely worth saying. Um, first of all, thank you very much to the AMSA team. Uh, I appreciate it very much, uh, the opportunity uh, to share some of the things that I've learned, um, but a comment was made and thank you. I, uh, there is a cautionary note that there is data preparation as with any Excel spreadsheet or any data source, um, you, you need to prepare the data before you can meaningfully create the visuals. And um, I skipped that step in making it look easy, but, um, and sometimes you get the data and there's lots of transformations that have to happen, um, but a nice clean Excel spreadsheet that you are already working with actually does transfer very nicely. But, you know, it's easy, but it's not that easy, but it's still easy and you can do it. That's it. Perfect. Thanks for, for the caution and for the encouragement. All right. We're looking forward to seeing what, what data visualization everyone comes up with. So thank you so much, Sandra.
All right, everyone. Bye-bye. Thanks.